In today's video traders, we're gonna be talking about where to place your stop losses. Do you feel like the market always hits your stop loss or the market's constantly reversing against you? Well, this video might help you out. Stay tuned, let's get into it right now. Hello traders, hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I've got a concept that is a really hot topic and something that a lot of traders want to know more about and that's exactly why I've got this video here for you today. So again, stop losses are a very touchy subject when it comes to the world of trading or investing. Some people love stop losses, some people hate stop losses, some people think that your broker is always trying to hit your stop loss, some people think that's nonsense. There's so much debate around the concept of a stop loss, but today I wanna to talk a little bit about kind of some concepts that I personally find valuable when it comes to placing a stop loss, looking for opportunities to use a stop loss. You know, whether you like stop losses or not, right, there are probably some better or worse ways to use them. Today's video is going to focus on some concepts on where to place your stop losses a little bit better to maybe reduce the chances that your stop is going to get hit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what we see here on the chart. What we've got pulled up is Euro dollar. I am looking at a daily time frame but guys this is not necessarily super time frame dependent where you place your stop loss is going to be important on no matter what time frame that you're looking at right you want to reduce your risk but you don't want to make your stop loss too tight and that's what we're going to jump into here on the chart i've got some examples that i've pulled up and i've also just kind of i'm going to be walking through kind of placing a stop loss kind of a trade setup and how to potentially reduce your chance of getting stopped out so again i briefly mentioned uh, that placing your stop loss too tight is just as much of a problem as placing your stop loss too far away. Why would we not want to place it too close to price? Well, the markets are not perfect, guys. Just because you get a technical signal to go long does not necessarily mean that the market won't immediately kind of move a little bit to the downside first before ultimately working out in your favor, right? So, of course, we don't want to place our stop loss too tight or close to price, right? For example, let's say that the market kind of, uh, let's say that for whatever reason we decided that the market was going to go long right around here, right? So let's say that we we identified some sort of breakout and we wanted to buy into this market. I'm not, you know, I'm not basing this off of any idea, but I'm just doing it for the sake of example. Let's say that we bought this market here and you can see we place a stop loss, but our stop loss is just too tight. So let's say we enter on this open of this bar. Um, um, and again, bear with me, just kind of trying to get an idea. If we place our stop loss too tight, actually, you know what? We're going to use one of those tools. Let's use the, uh, we're on trading view. We might as well use the tool that is given to us on trading view, which is the long and short. There it is. I always can't find that. Okay. So let's say that you put your stop loss too tight, right? In this case, it would have been frustrating because you would have gotten stopped out of the trade. Let's say you're trading a breakout style. You identified that this was a recent high and you said, as soon as this price moves over the high, I want to get involved. You can see we had a close above that significant level. Level, and let's say that you wanted to take a buy trade there. Well, if you place your stop loss too tight, you run the risk of normal market volatility kind of chopping you around. And you can see overall that price made a movement ultimately up to our take profit. Let's again, theoretical trade here. It would have moved up nicely in our favor, but we placed the stop loss a little bit too close. So obviously we can't do that. That's a problem, right? And if we place a stop loss too far away, let's say that we were buying this pullback for whatever reason, let's say we have a trend line or and go, we'll go ahead and draw, let's say we had a trend line here, right? And we want to buy this pullback on the trend line. Well, let's say we did that and we place our stop loss really, really far away. Uh, again, cherry picking kind of an example here just for the sake of, uh, of, of simplicity, but we take a trade and price goes way against us. Well, in this case, we let our stop loss get really, really big, and this could have been a problem too. So what's the answer, Nick? What are we gonna do here? Well, guys, I wanna say for starters that I don't have some magical easy answer for you. Again, I believe that trading is a combination of a science as well as an art. There are scientific aspects of trading in my opinion, but there are also some things that can't be perfectly quantified in trading, um, and that I believe have some sort of an artistic or creative side to them. So with that said, there's not a perfect answer of how how tight do you make your stop loss versus how big you make your stop loss. But I do want to talk a little bit about market structure and I want to talk about some common market manipulation tactics that we do see placed by institutions, hedge funds, banks, you name it, your broker. Whether it exists or not, we can see it on the chart happening a lot. So again, we want to talk about some ways to combat that and to potentially reduce the chance of ourselves getting you know, taken out of a trade on a stop loss based on some sort of fake out. So we're going to talk about market structure today. So what I've got here 
here, again, we're talking about Euro dollar, we're talking about uh, the daily time frame, and let's just say that we identify right here, you know what, I'm gonna make it a shape. Let's say that right here we identify, okay, we see a double top on this market. You can see we did get some rejection. And let's say that we're looking at it, let's say that the current time is like right around here, right? So we've seen this market kind of forming a double top, right? We had rejection, I'll pull up my sketch pad just for a second. Again, a theoretical trade that you might actually really like. So for example, we have this area here where markets were making a movement to the, to the long side and we got some sort of rejection and saw a lot of bearish pressure in this area. So as the market came up to this area, we saw another bounce off of this high, giving us a potential idea that the market may have some sort of further downside or we may see some sort of rejection in the future. So let's say that we want to take our sell position, uh, not here, but maybe after this movement to the downside, we say, okay, we see some bears in this general area. Let's look for an opportunity if price makes its way back up there. So again, the price slowly makes its way back up there. You can see it pushes up into this area and check this out, guys. You can see that price not only popped up into our area, but it went right past it. There's a lot to unpack here. So let's actually go into detail about what actually from a technical standpoint happened. Here is what we see. We see price come up into our area of resistance. And just as we had talked about with our technical analysis, this actually ended up being a really nice sell trade. You can see price did make a movement to the low side, right? It pushed down after coming into our area of resistance that we did identify in this market, right? We read the candlestick patterns. We identified that this market had a good chance of reversing in this area. So on the way back up, we said, okay, if price comes into here, I'm gonna build a nice trade with a good risk to reward. And overall, I'm looking to be short on this market and find a good opportunity to the sell side. So as price starts to make its way up into this area of resistance, we place a sell trade. And what normal people, a lot of traders are going to do is they're going to place a stop loss right above the recent highs, right? So we identify again, let's, let's just make a theoretical trade here, right? We identify, this is almost a trade that looks pretty good to me, right? So I would almost uh, be interested in this trade, but I want to talk about again, some concepts here that I think are going to be interesting. Um, and a lot of people need to hear. So we've identified this area, we identified more rejection and a nice little candlestick there. You can see uh, it is kind of like a bearish engulfing bar, right? So we do see some strength to the downside here. And let's say that for whatever reason, your strategy fits, you look for a second retest, right? A second retest of that, of that resistance zone, which we actually got. So you would have entered into the trade roughly around here and look at what happened, guys. Look at this candle right here. This candle actually tells such an elaborate story that we're going to unpack, unpack right now. So again, we identified that major level of resistance. Price came up into our area, but it did not stop there. In fact, we call this candle right here, this big boy right here, we call that a fake out, right? A fake breakout, a false movement to the upside that quickly reversed. So what do I mean by that? Well, what you can see is that price came up into our area. And again, our thesis about the trade actually was correct. We actually saw this market start to decline. We saw this market, actually this short trade would have worked out great, except for the fact that we saw this big movement to the high side before ultimately failing lower really shortly after, right? Look at this wick right here. This is really what I want to talk about. Look at the wick that came up into this area. This wick was not by accident. There was a lot here that was on purpose, right? So we see that, well, traders are looking to get short in this area, but who else knows that? It's not just you and me that know that. That's a great opportunity, right? From a lot of technical perspectives, all the textbooks will tell you, you know, might be a good opportunity here to sell this market. Now, what they also know or what the institutions and banks also know is this very same information, right? They know that a lot of retail traders uh, are going to be looking to get short right around this area. And where are they going to place their stop loss, guys? Well, there's a lot here that's interesting, which is they know that traders are going to put their stop loss just above the highs of the recent move. Remember, we identified that those moves... Um, are going to happen, right? We identified that there's a good chance that we see a market reversal here, and so did a lot of people, and they ultimately would have gotten stopped out right around this area. So what you can see here is that if our, st or if our, uh, if our stop loss was too tight, we would have been stopped out, and that's exactly what we saw. We saw a lot of stops get hit. This allowed institutions and banks and hedge funds and brokers and whoever to fill their positions, ultimately short, where we saw the market roll over and actually go the direction we had thought. So your analysis might've actually been correct, but 
because of that kind of tight stop loss that a lot of traders will use, this was actually a problem uh, because we saw a big stop hunt, right? That's what we call a stop hunt. When stops get run up just on purpose, just far enough to stop out a lot of the retail traders to where the market eventually rolls over and all of those same institutional traders that cause that stop hunt have just gotten in and they've got a great little entry on their trade. So what can we do, guys? This is kind of my warning on tight stop losses. Many traders who know my style and have watched my trades in the live room, the VIP service that I do offer, by the way, there's a link down below if you wanna follow my trades live, as well as join our signals group, our, our chat room, our educational content, uh, all sorts of good stuff there. But anyways, what people will know if they have watched me for a while is they know that I don't like super tight stop losses. And this is exactly why. Instead of trying to put a super tight stop loss in this trade, my personal opinion is to let the trade breathe. Now, of course, I already know what's happened here. So I can't really say that, you know, I, you know, I would have placed my stop loss right here. That would have been perfect, but that's not necessarily what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I don't like to put my stop loss super tight because the market doesn't move in perfect fashion. It moves with some noise involved, right? The markets aren't perfect and there's always sorts of differing news coming out and things that can cause price to go wild short term right so from my perspective i don't like to put the tight uh put a stop loss too tight on a trade i like to look for opportunities that give me a good risk reward while not making my tight uh my stop loss too tight on the market so with that said my idea is to put a little bit more space on the stop loss or in some of my strategies maybe I'll make future videos on this. I actually don't use a stop loss, but I use other ways to exit the trade if the trade goes against me. There are plenty of other ways to do that um, other than a stop loss. But again, I use stop loss as well as no stop loss in some of my differing trading strategies. But again, understanding that, you know, institutions know what a lot of retail traders are going to do is so key in understanding where you're going to place your trade. You don't want to trade like every other trader because a lot of times they're getting manipulated. A lot of times they're getting stopped out and they're losing money and it's a vicious cycle, right? So what we want to do, there's a couple opportunities, right? One idea that some traders will use is they will place their cells a little bit more patient, right? Now this might be very, very kind of out of, not in the textbook, very different right? Some traders will look to put their entry a little bit closer to where their stop loss would have been, right? So in this case, let's say that your stop loss would have been right here where our, our theoretical entry is going to be, right? Well, people still put a relatively tight stop loss, not too tight, not too kind of wide, right? But they put a small stop loss, a relatively small stop loss, and they trade kind of better risk to reward using this style. In this particular case, guys, this actually worked really, really well. You can see that, uh, you know, if you were patient enough to kind of wait for some sort of break out uh, or fake out, right? This would a would have been a great opportunity to get short where a lot of traders are going to get stopped out. Now that is kind of a whole nother discussion and really kind of understanding market manipulation is going to help you kind of trade like this if this is your particular style. I know a couple of traders that actually love to trade this style. They love to trade false breakouts and actually try and fade them with a good risk to reward and a good trading setup. If this is your style, I'd love to hear it down in the comments or even send me a message. If you want to get in contact with me, you can always send me a message on Instagram or Telegram at TraderNick135. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of this video and I hope to see you in some future ones. I've got videos up on the screen right now for you to click into. And to continue the conversation with me, I'm here to help you learn to trade. I've got all sorts of content waiting for you right here. Guys, thanks so much. We'll catch you next time.